I think we get away across the quarter mile. This is not exactly how I planned on spending my Saturday. Not the way I planned on spending my weekend. I mean, I'd love to say I'm saving gas, but boy, I have a full, did you have a full tank? Uh, car not on now, but I have a full tank and Hashtag not fun. Take kicked in, yo. Feel that there, VTEC. Variable valve linked electronic control. No, variable valve and electronic. Yeah, variable valve timing and electronic lift control. Oh, but hold on. I'm driving Volkswagen. Boost! Boost! We're coming on high boost. That moment, you know your timing belt is done. You can poke it to the you can literally poke it to the screwdriver and it just moves. Not taut, not tight, not any of that. So let's see what happened now. Okay, so this is a uh, quote-unquote re-unboxing of the F23T. Let's see now. Yeah, so. Franken Turbo. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I had already unboxed this before. And taken out the stuffing I was a bit excited so they shipped us a nice hardware kit this this measured at two inches which is strange but oh well get that checked out two inches put that down so Use itself. This is a hardware kit. Turn the phone sideways. So, this is a complete hardware kit, just like you would get if you were to order a OEM K040064 from Revotechnic. Or and nicely labeled. 
sure we don't pep stud blah 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 you can read all of these things here yes all of these things here are <clears throat> right it's all right it's having a bit of a cold at the moment it tends to sound a bit muffled all right what else do we have here Not the usual good stuff. Don't buy it casket. However, I might not necessarily... Yeah, I will actually use this one. No, I won't use this one. Yeah, I will use this one. Just my for casket. Mm-hmm. That down, and this is the big stuff. Big stuff. Oh, manifold. Sorry, I can't even put this with one hand. Oh, yeah, Do this with one hand, but. As you can see, official Borg Warner part number. Although it's not a Borg Warner, not exactly a Borg Warner part, missing the, it's missing the K up front. But no worries. It's been copied very well. 5303, I mean 5303, 5303 is a K03. The K03 has a 5303, so. Yeah, you know this is a K04, K04 one. Holes have been nicely, nicely done, neat. Face is all right. Oh, gotta do this one-handed. Gonna get it. And for those of you who want, hold on, let me put, put down the phone a sec. So for those of you who know, who remember the KO3, you would not be able to get this exposed section here for the wastegate. The KO3 would have had more meat inside here. Brand new, no shaft play. I'm going to have so much fun spooling this thing up. Yeah, so. Literally no shaft play. I'm pushing in, pulling out, wiggling up and down. No shaft play. What the hell? So. Let's look at the CHRA center housing rotating assembly. This is how they've bolted it up. Got the breather here. Rear PCV, where my thumb is. Oh, kind of difficult doing this one handed. down in there well, that's going to be under boost so I don't mind how it looks this is there
I won't bother to port or polish this. Well, I guess this, this was not part of the original design. So this manifold would be a copy of the Borg Warner Q4 um, cell manifold, CHRA, most likely something in something from China. But hey, if Franklin Turbo do, goes through the process of rebalancing these themselves, and why not? And the, this is. This right here was the debatable portion. So they have made, so they have this aftermarket turbo muffler. How it's going to work. I have no idea or any how well it's going to work. I have no idea. They say no ref restriction in terms of flow. So and it looks it looks pretty smooth in there. Well, Pierberg part. So this this is one thing you can bank on to be genuine. Hoses and seventy five. Yeah, well, hoses, once they don't leak, they're good. Coil lube it. Remind me to put some fresh oil on there. Just for good measure. Oil that up too. Just for good measure. So lube, lube, lube. And else am I going to look for sorry doing this single handed is not fun the shipping the shipping weight for this was 27 pounds so it is quite a bit of a quite, quite weighty in the hand Sorry. Actuator. I've seen some for um seen some discussion on forums in regards to preload and all that stuff. Like pretending like all that actually means something to me, but I will leave this at stock settings. Just make a note. So in the future, that's where that is at. I'm sure that they had a good reason of setting it the way they did. Franklin Turbo, serial number 7029. So let's see what happens when I install this. Whenever I can get that opportunity. My timing belt is broken, so that's going to have to be fixed first, which is going to involve taking the head off. Taking the head off, replacing valves. Of course, timing belt kit with head gasket and new tensioner, new rollers, all that stuff have to be done first in top priority. Yeah, so, as you can see, no K here. So it's not it's not a Borg, Borg Warner part, but the casting seems in good condition in my opinion, and this looks like it will definitely do the trick. 
So it's just install it, have fun, and let's see. All right, sorry about that. So what we have here, so as you can see, the manifold um, 5304. 04 to denote the kill for here. Alright. <clears throat> so has to um, cast replicate off of the Borg Warner um, product. CHRA. So you have oil line in up top, oil drain on the bottom. I transferred the GFB. Go fast bits um, DV plus. Now, as it relates to all this being an official F twenty three T and all, although it's always cause of concern when you see. This covering up a serial number at the back, but oh well. Right, so this is the part we are we were talking about it yesterday. So what's done with this design? Well, as you can see, this has been this was casted this way. But in the casting, they have done away with the entire turbo muffler that you'd be accustomed to seeing on your own. So the muff the, so the actual muffler itself would would be about the span of my hand, of my fingers here, going all the way around. They got rid of they got rid of um of that design and went with this slim free-flowing model that doesn't have any restrictions internally so what they've done is that for the factory one they had a actual muffle like an internal baffle that actually mutes um, mutes the output of what comes out here um so they so this design gets rid of that so you have a nice free flow on the inside where it is nice and smooth. All of this, which I'm feeling my finger is actually ported. So it's ported and polished. So you have a nice smooth transition. smooth transition and then all right so they ship this disconnected to keep this nice and loose you don't want these nipples breaking off so it stays nice and flexible that way <clears throat> right so the T model that I was making reference to earlier you have some of the T models where this entire assembly actually points downward that you didn't that you definitely don't want if if you happen to get one of the T models that this whole setup here points down that way, yeah, you definitely wouldn't wouldn't want that because it would be colliding with the subframe, which is then another interesting kind of worms that you definitely don't want to have to have to deal with. So here is my actuator, which is. This is a eight pound, um, eight pound preload inside here by design. All right. So, on to the situation of measuring shaft play. So, as you can see, this would be a genuine KO4 style denoted here. They had to leave some meat meat for the wastegate arm or pin to go through. 
on that. So this has this maintain retains the OEM roughness going out, but it doesn't really wouldn't matter as the air um, that comes out would will be coming out this slot and straight out the pipe that way anyway. Now for measuring shaft play. So what you do on your existing unit, you would hold, and of course it should spin freely. It should spin freely. Just not a problem here. And the shaft plate, so you try to wiggle up and down. I'm trying to go up and down, I'm trying to go left and right. That's not happening. I'm trying to go in and out. That's not happening either. It's kind of hard. No. Yeah, so that's so, so far. It has been. So good. Taking a look at the casting on the inside here to get some of the stuff out. Thank goodness anything that comes out that goes through here is as soon as get out the go out the pipes anyway. to be this side that is critical that nothing actually gets gets in and see these holes are all covered up so the joys of the turbo exhaust gas is going in spreading the turbine on this side which spins a nice um, beautiful compressor wheel in here which takes as you know already know takes air from up top it spins and compresses and blows it out above atmosphere above atmospheric pressure rather So any queries about the F23T, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the thread below. So, this is a continuation of, let's say, the previous video. So car jacked up on jacked up, placed on jack stands, door is going to be replaced, don't watch this, this is a side skirt, damaged, uh, yeah, so inside is a bit on the dirty side, so this is the diverter valve which is easy to install, I mean once the car is jacked up, you will see one, two, and then the third bolt is on the other side, I'm going to point to it it's where my index finger is pointing on the other side in a, tri in a triangular fashion so pull, pull these three bolts and put it on and you are good good to go since I will be doing a oh also too important to pull this this clip right here pull it down this one 
So pull this off first, pull these three bolts, one, two, and the third one on the other side. Remove, do the swap, put back in, and you're good to go. So it's gonna look like this once installed. Of course, with the wiring all neatened up and stuff. So this is a part of the intake removal in which I pulled one, one, two, three, four, five bolts up top and one nut, one bolt, one Torx bolt and another nut. So it's five nuts up top, five bolts up top and two bolts down the bottom in the middle one nut here and one nut to make nine in total these this one this one and this one you don't need to pull I just pulled it out of idleness uh, this connected a high pressure fuel pump that was sorry smelling a bit of fuel here a lot of fuel um, yeah, so this connected this connector here where my middle finger is pointing at that disconnected pulled off the vacuum pump for the brakes up top here and it's just a matter of gently tugging of course disconnected these two up top so disconnected and disconnected as well Yeah, so the fuel is draining. So the fuel that was in the fuel rail that's inside here is draining down to the floor, waiting for that to finish draining out, and then we'll continue. We'll proceed. Oh, I uh, forgot to mention this was also removed as part of the introductory um, set of steps, which, as you can see, was just a simple four, four bolt um, procedure. Pulled off, disconnected from here, disconnected from here first. Pull these four bolts. You don't have to take the throttle body off. I just did it um, just for the fun of it. But you don't need to take your throttle body off. I just did it because I wanted to get access to, all right. I did it um, because I wanted to get access to this bracket. This bracket underneath was in my way, so I had to remove it this other body to get to it but normally or if you had if you have this disappear um, this removed which has would typically have a part number similar to this then you would not need that's the official Volkswagen part number which looks like 06 F one two nine seven seven two three F yeah so once you remove that you're good to go so because I only have one hand, I mean two hands, one hand holding the camera, I'm going to have to stop recording now to pull off the rest of the intake manifold. As you can see here, you see some carbon buildup, so we're going to take a look at that in very short order. Alright, be gentle when pulling. There is this connector here, which I just could not seem to get off, and I have to pull that by all the means, and then there is another connector right underneath where my index finger is pointing upward that you need to be gentle with and pull off once you get the intake manifold off all right youtube so uh that's not what i wanted to show you there we go this is what carbon buildup on a 2.0 tfsi engine looks like Cylinder one, two, three, and four. Alright, the whole thing is sorry, the camera is being held at an angle on the basis that there's not much space in there, haven't. So this is the intake side. The reason why this whole thing is being pulled apart right now, apart from the carbon cleanup. 
Well, the re yeah, real carbon cleanup is the secondary reason. But the primary reason is that the timing belt actually broke. I suspect that the damage really has occurred on the exhaust side where there are no indentations for the valve to overlap with the piston. So, just throw some pulling apart. So, this is just a small little clip of what the intake manifold looks like with, I mean, what the engine looks like with the intake manifold removed. So you have these two different paths, like so. Blah blah blah. I'm gonna flap, and you have the air guides. That will do what they do. Two best. So you have two different volumes. Um, now which air goes through. Side, right there. We can move the vehicle to the left side, right there. So, right side, left side, right side, left side. All right. So in my case, because I know I need to, the lowest point I need to pull is this section right here I did I'm just allowing this to drain this a little bit more because I need to get the valve train up top drained um, my um, drained as well because I'm changing the t also changing the timing belt and the valve um, the valves so I have to get the head off that's a separate project um, but for the sake of this video and pulling off the turbocharger first it would involve unbolting this so of course the moment you unbolt this all would um, would naturally drain out hence the reason why we're going through the process of draining out as much oil as we possibly can The car is currently on jack stands at the moment. Jack stands, jack stands here. Yeah. So we are. <clears throat> so the car is angled back just a wee bit. So when I pull this, whatever residual oil is in the line is going to drain out. And likewise for any coolant as well. So the next step is. So this is in in a cooler. Don't mind this. This is going to be replaced in short order. <clears throat> right. So for the inner cooler, I mean. So for the radiator, I'm going to pull this section here to drain out what is in the radiator right now. So it'll drain out. To about this height but fundamentally though the other end of this pipe is just going to drain right out the water that's that's in here and it's going to create a mess that's the annoying part part about it it's going to create a mess so from what I'm seeing this is the lowest point Well, let's see, let's see, let's see. This actually seems like possibly the lowest point. That I could actually drain all the water out off because of course the moment you pull the turbo, all, all of that coolant is gonna just rush right out, so. Might as well empty it. Might as well empty it. All 
Alright, so one other step of the process I forgot to mention earlier. Getting around to it now. Is to drain the coolant. So, coolant bottle, I mean, coolant, such rough, um, homemade. And what I cut was here. Alright, so, so simply just move the clamp, and this is the auxiliary pump when we switch off switch the car off, you have this pump that pumps the coolant around especially when you're running hard on the boost and so I'll just leave this for a couple of minutes to drain out and stuff and you should be good to go so the removal process I mean after we unbolted I mean after we've Drain the engine oil from here. So the previous owner had done a bit of job of running. The previous owner had hit the oil, slapped the oil pan on something, cracked it or something. This is going to be replaced in a later episode. But for now, draining coolant. Let's see, make sure everything is. I think that should be about it. So let's see. So what should be in the system is just what's in yes, what should be in the system is just what's in the radiator. I could have that wrong. Because coolant also came out of this section right here too. So here and here coolant drained out for a couple of seconds well keep the coolant came out of here so whatever was in this line I assume this line here I assume drained out that way came out here fall out from the trough and this as well so let's see what happens when I hook this all back up and start pulling start pulling this 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 and this and then there's the there is the bung up top one. Yeah. So what you're looking at in the center of the screen is the oil oil return. And at the top of the screen, I'm assuming this would be coolant on coolant on one side, and then you have oil on the next thing you can't quite see it on this particular display it'll be on on top on the other side so unbolt that and see what happens i need both hands so i can't quite show this process so at some point your disassembly process will look something along the lines like this this here what came from that hole we get you had a banjo bolt going through you have this here my next finger is pointing on one coolant line other coolant line down the bottom you'd have most likely pulled or pulled already the top bolts were my index fingers trying to point underneath those have all been pulled so it is just getting getting the turbo out carbon buildup 101 Cannot see just using my imagination. This should be here. Should be here should be here. Should be here. That 
Use my imagination for this one, guys. I'll be doing the pulling so that you don't have to. Alright, so the aim in this segment is to get to that bolt. We can get it up, we can get it downward. I'm trying to get to that bolt. Okay, so we have a genuine Borg Warner KO3. As you can see, manifold part number 5303 to denote KO3. Not entirely sure what these are for, if this would be a serial number of some sort. As you can see, CHRA, the K to denote it's an official Borg Warner product. The band in the middle. So you have the oil side up top. So oil in, oil out on the bottom. You have the coolant going in on that side. So coolant goes in here and comes out that hole. And as you can see, you have the N75 valve and the genuine Borg Warner KK3 badging. So what is of course of concern is that the N75 valve, although being a genuine Pierberg um, part, is not actually fastened to the housing. So the diverter valve has been removed as denoted by the three empty mounting holes. Manufacturing date here as shown in 2007, the month has not been the actual month is not clear, but based on the manufacturing dot, I'll leave you to generate, um, to form your own conclusion on it. This M8 stamp, what looks like a M8 and then you have what look like 77, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I'll have you do your own research and determine what that it, um, what that entails as you can see a genuine stamped k to denote that it is a genuine borg, borg warner part and not a clone that has actually been copied all right so looking down into the actual um casting itself as you can see the casting is pretty smooth has does not show any form of um deformities uh, just a light bit of dust debris, the usual for a turbine, which I mean for a compressor um, side, looking on the turbine side, as you can see, this looks in, seems to be in good condition. Reason, reason for this actually being removed would have been a broken timing belt. Timing belt broke and as you can see, during this period, the wastegate itself was closed. Um, there was no, there is no need for any form of boost being built. The turbine wheel, however, does show. Turbine wheel, however, does show signs of. Well, it is actually spinning smoothly. Yeah, it really is spinning smoothly. But, yeah, spinning smoothly. I'm gonna do a quick check for shaft play if there is any. I'm pushing with my finger down. All right, let me just grab it. All right, so there is, all right, no shaft play in and out. Yeah, literally zero shaft play in and out. This is a very good turbo. Up and down. I'm trying to hold the camera steady while I do this. 
you can see that and left so up and down you can see that left and right you can see that too this unit actually floats on a float actually floats on a cushion of wall so this is actually normal this to me would be inspect I mean when we send it out for servicing we'll have a specialist check and actually check to ensure that that is in mechanical um, that is mechanically sound but otherwise not seeing any anything here to indicate that the unit itself is smoking all right all right actuator time well the actuator here i'm trying to do a push and pull there is no movement so this is for me good at least it would have allayed my fears that there was an actual problem with actuator you can see my finger so i'm pushing and pulling no movement that is good as you can see hold on in the world 5304 hmm that's something I need to do some research on what looks like 5304101 5 sorry 5304101 actually it's arms in my way yeah 5304101 5194. I'm not entirely sure if that is a serial number, but just the same. I'll be Googling that one later because at this point I'm not entirely sure. At first, I thought a 5304 was for all KO4 parts. I could possibly have a case where somebody did a rebuild in which they place a KO4. Could, it, could somebody place a KO4? cold side on a KO3 hot side that's anything nowadays is actually very much possible <clears throat> I have no idea what's being stamped here Well, the casting seems smooth. It could be ported. Could be, um, as in, could later be ported rather, and could then later be pushed. All right, so lost track of which day this is, but this is where we are now. Shut off. And take off. Blah blah blah. Very and. This is what the naked block looks like. As usual, got lucky. Got lucky. Turn these, clean those. That'll be good. Yeah. That right there shows evidence of some real heat where a blanket would be required. The hatching is cause for concern. Oh, 
whatever this is a new o-ring is needed <clears throat> Old K04 right here or a F23T. Alright. So as you can see here, what we are looking at is bent valves on cylinders number one and two. One and two, as you can see, this right here, not closing or sealing up ever again. Sorry, whoops, sorry, I shifted the camera a while ago. Yeah, so this right here, as you'll see, this is not in any way, shape, or form I'm going to seal. This is where the nightmare begins. All right. This is not how I'd envisioned all of that pitting. So this is a new day in which I, so the head has been pulled off, I'll be sending this to Precision Head Shop. This is my official part number. Official part number of, um, ending with AE. So this is the variable valve timing um, mechanism. Principle of operation, I am not 100% sure. I am sure that this is hydraulic. Oil goes in. And then you have actuation happening in either direction. So I'm going to get, today try to get this passage all filled out properly. And should be good. Taking the cams out. Alright, so something went horribly wrong camera in focus all right so uh, BWA engine same as it similar to the BPY or AXX models so between this mark and 
yeah, this manufactured mark and the other mark on the other side on the other side I have 20 links not 19 as documented online also too this chain has literally no slack in it such that when I pull this pin out this doesn't even spring up there's no no play up top no play underneath find it so find the situation so perplexing right now at, at the moment I'm trying to figure out what in the world is causing this I haven't even I haven't even bolted this in I haven't even bolted this in place yet so what had happened because the timing belt had broken I simply pulled off the pulled off the head taken out both cams replaced all 16 had all 16 valves replaced at the machine shop had the head skimmed reinstalled the head dropped the cams in and then it was trying to set the link these together using the 19 link um, rule between the timing mark that I am seeing in seeing on this particular forum but that just has not been successful and this chain is confusing the heck out of me because whatever it is it is so tight there is just zero play in it It's sort of as though this chain was actually meant for a vehicle that does not have a tensioner on it. However, the tensioner and the chain came in the exact in the same kit. So I'm at a bit of a loss now that I have 20 links, 20 of these individual links or half links or whatever you want to call them between this timing mark and the other mark on this unit I haven't pulled this since I had both cams out so if somebody could shed some light on that I would greatly appreciate it all right so this is a different day in which we are looking at <clears throat> My 2.0 TFSI engine, which I had previously done a installation of the two camshafts. So, two camshafts installed, tightened using <coughs> these bolts here, all new, all 23 of these brand new torque down to spec if I remember it was I can't remember the units off the top of my head um, I'll take the measurements off the top of my head rather and as such that unit plus 90 and uh, 90 degree turn this that you see here this green gooey stuff was the adhesive that did factory adhesive green it's an anaerobic so an anaerobic sealant which <clears throat> cures in the absence of oxygen but it's um, triggered by the I don't know it's a, I'm seeing one site saying the ions in the metal once pressed together that happens and as such here we are All right so the two camshafts now the two camshafts during the installation process were actually tied together by putting what was hap what happened was that okay so I did it I didn't use the actual cam locking tool I just simply used the <clears throat> the fact that these uh, um, cylinder number four these two cam lobes when you're properly timed 
these two cam lobes were are supposed to be pointing the cam profiles should be pointing up the same amount if you can see in the video well okay so when set at top dead center no okay and so this is not perfectly top dead center for the but for the purpose of the video let's assume that it actually was trying to get my camera to focus yeah so the, for the purpose of the video we're assuming that it actually was set to top dead center and as such we these two what I did is I used a flat I used a straight edge to actually make a use my camera in focus again yeah I used a straight edge to measure these cam lobes to make sure that the profiles were the same in order the amount that they actually point up was the same and that actually worked out to be 20 teeth um, 20 teeth exactly so this blue dot here this blue mark is the actual tooth I didn't use this gold link that actually right. it can't be seen in the can't be shown in the video but this is a gold link or copper looking link I didn't use this any at all what I did was this tooth right here on the outside here that you can see there it might be pale might not be very visible in the video focus right you see that little indent that little dent there that's the manufacturer's um, mark for the timing chain I used I so I simply just took a marker a blue marker blue sharpie and just highlighted that highlighted the tooth on the side so it's much easier for me to see and I did the same for the notch on the other side on this exact um, exhaust um, BVT mechanism I didn't in any way shape or form pull this off this is this requires a power drive bit I do have the power drive bit, but I just did not want to have to deal with the, the process of pulling this off. So what I did, since I had the two physical cams out, since this was a timing belt um, job replacement, I had to replace all 16 valves, so I had two cams out. What I did was with this tensional loose or slacked up, um, loose I mean off the three bolts were not done I can spin this around because there's no actual oil pressure to push this out yeah so with this lobe yeah so with this off I had lined up lined up the two such that the cam profiles were pointing to towards um, each other at that particular um, at the same angle and also the notches for the for the cylinder head are facing each other and I simply just worked out that it takes 20 teeth from here uh, sorry 20 half links so this is half link number one that my index finger is pointing at and number two three it takes 20 between this blue blue dot or that particular tooth on the sprocket from what I want is blue in color to go all the way around to the other one which is on the other side of this you can't see it in the video I just simply made a also made a blue mark on the VVT mechanism as well a little thing so, so that I can actually see it and then from there you know you have you can have no fear while dropping the two cams in with the tensional in and then I simply just bolted up this um, what do you call it the cam bridge up top bolted that down and then I could simply tighten the tensioner and then get around to doing the rest of the timing so this is where we are currently with this particular task 
I can't remember the actual torque settings, but it was that torque setting plus a 90 degree turn on each of these 23 bolts here. So that was done. Yeah, so the next step would literally be to to simply to properly just simply set this to where is this little notch? It's kind of looking off in the camera. Focus. Yeah, so that get this back to the top dead center mark. This notch here in the middle with that OT um, position and then match that with um, the OT position down below attach a belt do up all of this with the tensioner and we should be we should literally be good to go once done Oh, also there was actually a, uh, I forgot one step. There is actually a rubber seal that should go inside here. I haven't actually hammered that in place yet. So I'll be also doing that in short order. If I don't remember to do that, then when I start the car, I'm gonna have oil that's gushing out here, which is not, definitely not a good sign. Alright, so where we are now is a <clears throat> partial reassembly working at this time of night. Force valve cover installed from the last last video clip. Down pipe bolted back in place. Turbocharger had been clocked. Um, yeah, turbocharger had, had to be clocked up with it a bit because this was set up. This came for a Mark 6 TSI. This would had to be clocked upward. To ensure that the cap that's a couple things one this rear PCV on the boost actually comes and connects to this piece in the center it was quite a quite a stretch for this to connect up here via that accordion hose so that's where we are at now oh rear dog bone mount reinstalled and bolted up so it's just really to Retouch the turbine and coolant lines, oil line and coolant lines, rather, for the turbo at the back. All right, so this is where we are with the 2.0 TFSI build. So we got the turbine mounted, oil lines run, rear PCV. This needs to be this needs to be connected like here, right here, like so. That's that. Um, so where we end up. So we haven't done anything with the side of the engine. So downpipe bolted up. Oxygen sensor still in place. We didn't trouble that. This gets connected at. Uh, Reattach it to later date. Turbocharger clocked correctly. Alright. So the outstanding matters on this side. Alright, so agency power lightened, crankshaft pulley attached, accessory belt attached. This solvable, this turbo outlet pipe, still, oh yeah, um, axle shield in place. <laughs> so axle shield in place, right here, like so, um, connected, oil level connected um 
to the oil, return to the oil pan, attached, and new gasket placed, put in place. This oil pan will be replaced at a later date. Um, let's see now. <clears throat> so up top, where we have the up top boss, we have both coolant. So you can't quite see it in this. Yeah, you have both coolant, um, coolant and oil line attached. They're also to the CHRA attached diverter valve, or are they still previously bolted on, but not electrically connected? That is for a later date when I fix try to fix this issue. So, all right, let's see if I can get it. Right. So this is the drop. Try to touch. Try to touch this to this. However, using the supplied F twenty three um, T hose, the silicone hose is not not working out for me. So I need to get something a little better. Yeah. So when that's done, this is that this would be attached. Um, if I could get a new speed P flow, that would give me significantly better. So that's where we are for now. All right, so here we are another day doing this. So this contraption is simply a, is simply a breaker bar, short breaker bar, attached via a U-shaped, a U-shaped bolt, that is in the form of a U, connected this way so I can keep this end wedged against, not the alternator, but just the bracket down below and then what I'm gonna do when I'm gonna when I torque this bolt when I torque this cam bolt this whole thing should stay stationary I don't have a pin spanner so this is what I'm gonna do for the purpose of getting this whole thing torqued down to factory spec all right so the torquing process actually so in the manual that I have the pins Yes, in the Hines manual, it's 37, 37 foot pounds or 50 newton meters. This particular torque wrench measures in foot pounds, so I just use those units. Although I only appreciate metric, but since this is what the torque wrench has, so it's 30, um, so, uh, 30, sorry, 37 foot pounds rather plus an additional 180 degree turn so this is what the contraption looks like I have the breaker bar attached um, to this via that that and it's not pushing down on the tensioner it's just resting down on the sorry resting down on the mount and that's what I did to torque it down
kind of ghetto, but hey, it works without any damage to the actual sprocket itself. All right, so this is where we are now, looking at putting back on the intake manifold. These have been bolted. Well, this hasn't been been bolted by only one one bolt. As you can see, this is an aftermarket engine mount, so that will have to bolt up have to be done up at a different day. Uh, looking at the Satan bolt now, this right here, the Satan bolt itself. You'll soon see why it's called as such. It has to go here and like this to support the intake manifold. Not fun trying to catch this where it's being blocked by all of this here but we're gonna get it done one way or the other somehow somehow we're gonna get it done so this is what i'm looking like so far all right so this right here is what new injectors and new dividers look like carb carb clean um carb build up cleaned off so new valves new dividers new injectors just gotta hook up the electrical connectors and get it get it going well, i want to put a new gasket on as well
so this is what this spooling engineering intake actually looks like I mean ah, not intake turbo outlet discharge pipe, pipe looks like so using all the spooling hardware so one of the things to note is that it is very a very tight tolerance so what it means is that anytime I need to pull off this belt for any um, reason I'm gonna have to take this off or some way some old friend slip it in between there and there yeah so this is yeah so there's supplied hose clamp how it connects to the turbo outlet pipe up top here I don't like that particular fit fitment. What I'll do next weekend is find an O-ring that I can use in its place. But a little, a little more on that later. So this goes on here. I'm satisfied with this fit, and I'm satisfied with this fit. So. The starter up I mean of course officially one would go through the process of putting back on the fender liner and all of that stuff and the apron underneath fire up and should be good good to go all right so folks so what we have here is a 2008 Volkswagen Golf GTI Autobahn edition which has started started pulling apart what I'm doing today is doing a change of an alternator belt change that's this one this old one here in place of that one and at the same time also pulling changing my pulley for a lightweight pulley so what's happening is that i'll be installing this lightweight pulley which weighs only one pound in place of this other pulley right here which weighs four pounds for one pound one pound in place of four pounds so what i've started doing before previously was to pull the as you can as you may have noticed the serpentine belt that's this belt this is the old one this is the new one the serpentine belt has been pulled off what i did was took a 5 8th um, press it pull down like so onto here pull down to ease the tension and then with the other hand I've pulled the belt off of the alternator and air alternator up top that's this unit and the air conditioning compressor down the bottom pull that off and then I can, can release this At, at that point using the other hand I'd simply slide this off which that has been done don't need this anymore you can discard that and what you then do you'd put the other belt um, in its place what I forgot to omit what I had omitted to mention is that of course you have to jack the car up jack the car up um, take the take the wheel off of course loosen the wheel first loosen all five lug nuts bolts in this case um, yeah, so jack the car up. I mean, loosen the bolt, crack the bolts, um, jack the car up. Then you can take the the wheel off completely. Of course, never actually work under a jack. Have a jack stand, and so the car is actually resting on on the jack stand here. That's this unit. Safety first. This is just here for for props. As you can see, it's not even not even hold supporting the weight of the vehicle. So what I'm going to do is to what I've started, what I've already done is cracked all six of these, cracked all, cracked all six, pulling these off, put this on, and then it will just be re the reverse of putting the new one in place. Don't watch the shape. This looks like this kind of looks like a looks like a penis with two balls down the bottom don't ask that's just how continental wraps the belt so on with the show 
So this right here is what it actually looks like with this unit removed. Unit removed, unbolted, blah blah blah, all that stuff. So this, you put this on a scale, four pounds. You put this on a scale, one pound. And of course, it's a very important for me to put this disclaimer. These six bolts, you will never, you should never be using these again. These are torque to yield bolts, TTY, TTY bolts, torque to yield. Means once you tighten them down, you don't, you want to torque them down to spec, you don't, um, you can't, they're, they stretch and they should not be used again. Some folks use them, but this engine last time on a dyno produced in excess of 300 horsepower. So we're not talking about crank here. We're not talking about the crank here. Yeah, so on that basis, you definitely don't want to be reusing these. Once you've pulled these off, they're done. Toss them in the trash or if you're evil, sell them to some somebody, some unsuspecting person, as though they're something brand new. But the problem now is that the difference between new and used, you can't tell nowadays. You have to just put the these. If you put these besides the new ones, you'll find that these are actually longer. Or you measure this with a with a caliper, you'll see that the, it's, the two are different, different lengths, because these would have stretched during the torquing process. And the stretching process actually happens right here at the neck, at the, right here. So on this basis, you definitely don't want to reuse these for any reason ever again.